Okay. Uh, yeah. So, good morning, everyone. I'll be speaking about the uh, materials and techniques. Uh, more over to with the techniques of using materials, rather both in the structural uh, framework and the internal finishes of uh, of the auditorium design. Most of us are uh, stuck at uh, some uh, section levels or uh, deciding about materials. And that should be done by now with planning. We have certain examples that have taken, uh, you all can prepare a material palette or at least take down notes uh, to put up thoughts on what materials and how you could be using the materials. Uh, here's the first example, that's uh, the House of Culture by Alvar Alto. And uh, this this example goes on to say that, uh, you know, by uh, starting with the most basic material that we have, a brick. And uh, when we speak about the auditorium of huge volumes, uh, which involves curves, we often uh, wonder uh, how do we do it in brick or a similar material which has to be big, which is standard size and which cannot be curved, uh, at least in those times, the structure, I think, from the 50s or something, where uh, parametricism was not much uh, thought of, or there was no easy way of achieving it. Today, we can tilt bricks. I mean, if you give a brick to BRK Engels, you'll make, uh, make a floating wall out of it. Uh, but then, so the, the level of intervention that you go through is you actually design the brick such that it curves and not use standard bricks. Uh, so each of the brick uh, on each of the planar curve of the structure has been uh, designed to achieve that curve. And then it is later on plastered in the exterior, obviously it's exposed. Uh, but when we come to the interiors of the auditorium, what we see is, is concrete on the the columns and finished on the roof. But if you notice the walls, uh, very cleverly there are certain areas where there is the, the curved brick and certain areas where probably there is plastered concrete. Now what happens is uh, in an auditorium we all have studied uh, probably from the services part is we need a mix of uh, acoustical panels which give us the ability to reflect as well as absorb. Uh, so that's how part part of the panels or part of whatever your wall insulation is has to be uh, the major part has to be reflective, the minor part has to be uh, absorptive. That's how it's designed. So here they've taken up a brick as the primary material, and what we could do with the mix of brick and not uh, relying on some something or uh, some sort of an add-on layer uh, after making the wall. That is so. Uh, yeah, that's that's an example of that. Also, I've uh, not put drawings here uh, in section of plans. I can always refer to them. I put sources. Uh, one of the interesting features is that uh, the access lobby, or uh, sort of the steps which you see on the bottom uh, right corner, it's a model of that. Uh, and uh, they, there were four uh, entrance ways to this, all emitting from the middle of the auditorium and it's been uh, designed in a manner that the lobby, the small staircase lobby itself serves as a uh, as a social hub, as a small uh, social gathering space in itself. So you don't just uh, bang open the doors and you enter the auditorium. There's, there's, a, there's a sort of inviting feeling and again that's done in the similar uh, fashion as to the other structure as a whole. Uh, the next, uh, again, we'll see a lot of wood in the examples for the obvious reason that it has an amazing uh, ability of acoustics. Uh, this is a building in Spain, run by LAP Architects and Associates. Uh, what we see here is a contrast of materials. Again, um, uh, the examples arrive from their local context, materials available. Someone wants to replicate the language of uh, the neighborhood, the state, the country. Uh, so here, the roof is entirely done in wooden slats. Uh, notice the uh, curvilinear uh, section that we get the profile. So if I was uh, to say that the larger portion of the curve serves as the reflective uh, panel, because if you draw those angles right from the section from the stage, you need uh, sound to reflect over a wider spread audience, which is on the seats. And the smaller section will be acting as an absorptive one. So notice uh, there's a section 
goes up above uh, the seats, which is probably the balcony. That is covered again in the same wood at an angle such that when sound obstructs or sound uh, uh, reaches uh, that uh, railing, you could say, again, it reflects and percolates to the rear seats. Uh, so, again, very smartly done. The walls have been uh, uh, chosen to be done in plastered ribs. Uh, now, the advantage of this, if um, there were niches into it or some of it are, uh, uh, we can notice uh, they are uh, they are white, uh, some of them are uh, more opaque and if there were niches, those niches would have absorbed it and the part which judge uh, protrudes acts as reflective. So again, ribs give you the ability uh, to uh, deviate sound uh, the way we want to. Uh, the uh, the very sleek uh, section, or I should say a sleek line of uh, air blowers, the air conditioning system, the way it has been concealed um, uh, to to an adequate amount of conditioning. Uh, and uh, the seats are foldable. And in this case, uh, they are concealable. So if, the, if there was uh, some provision or if there was a need to have an entire empty floor, they could do that. If you notice on the floor, there are uh, certain small grooves that we see uh, in, in the row of every seat. So probably each row of seats comes down and then you can uh, dismantle the seat. We can very cleverly see there are only four to five supports in the entire row. Probably take the seats out and the floor is ready. So each of the rows is uh, movable. Uh, right? That's achieved by a virtue of hydraulics, which is uh, you'll get it in a lot of sections. It's a simple mechanism. Uh, and also when not in use, the seat is actually taking up less than half the space of what it should be taking up when it's completely open. So that's that's another level solution uh, to uh, the techniques involved in an auditorium seating. Uh, here's an example from France. Again, uh, a clever use of wood. Now here we have stone, uh, which is more to do with the... Uh, uh, with the contemporary uh, design laws or uh, with abundance of stone in the area. So how what do we do with the stone unless my structure has to behave in a different manner when it is an auditorium? So cleverly, again, the entire roof and part panels of the wall are only where uh, we need a sound to reflect back or absorb has been covered in wood. Uh, the panels used here are infill panels. Now they are wooden but they are infused with fiber boards uh, at places and the black that you see is a acoustical fabric. So again, choosing selectively where uh, we need absorbing materials and where we need reflective materials. So uh, the, uh, uh, the idea and the continuation of the same coffers or uh, raffle grid on the roof. Uh, so if, if we take out the, the part wall and the roof, uh, that's the acoustical part. That is what does most of the things with sound. And the rest of the stone uh, serves as pure aesthetics. If you look at the stage, uh, the axis, the steps, uh, everything is done in stone. So here there's a contrast of stone and uh, wood infilled or infused panels. Uh, again, uh, this is a building in Morocco and very obviously, if, if it was not stated, I mean, it's easier to guess uh, looking at the way uh, you know, it has been done. Morocco has these uh, uh, cleverly uh, used, used brick, probably even tiles, exterior, uh, the bricks have been used in that way in a lot of structures. Here they've used wood uh, in in the manner that I was talking in the earlier examples where Nisha is the the picture that we see on the right is a mold of those panels. The entire wall surfaces are covered with those molds. Now, these molds are made up in uh, multi-layered steel. So, that MLS is, the base is a multi-layered steel. It's a uh, steel uh, reinforced uh, fiber mold. And then they tried two options. One of them was uh, adding MDF on top. Uh, MDF, uh, again, being fibrous. Uh, the density can be controlled and that is how sound can be controlled uh, in a way. So they tried two layers of MDF, uh, 30 and 20 mm, and probably after that they tried an option of fabric. Uh, so the third option, you see staff, that's actually wet fabric cladding uh, to see uh, uh, how it works as an alternative. And they uh, settled down with MDF because uh, they needed it in wood. 
another observation with this is when you have a huge volume uh, let's say we have a space yeah. with a huge volume how do we make it look uh, uh, not over imposing so very cleverly again if you go over the walls uh, the there are black uh, fabrics uh, done so the roof in a way appears floating and uh, if it was entirely in wood also it breaks the monotony i mean this is literally wood everywhere that we see if it was to be covered all the three uh, let's say all the three layers to be covered in wood it would be a lot overwhelming uh, so just to give that cut just to break that uh, height a barrier in wood they uh, run that and again the need of uh, those uh, reflective panels is probably on the bottom most here in this case uh, it's not really a fan shaped auditorium all the seats are linear so then Uh, they figured out uh, where uh, they'll exactly need the amount of uh, reflection and where they'll exactly need absorption so that's how they've divided the uh, the section and uh, they have a system of uh, control wherein the reverberation time uh, we do in the calculation is as little as 0.2 seconds which is uh, good enough and it managed to isolate sound uh, with a double skin uh, room envelope so uh that's how again uh, they achieved insulation in some part and whenever we design an auditorium it's it's uh, if even if it's a fan shaped or a or a square or rectilinear you know we need uh, offsets and we need to uh, uh leave uh, the, an option for insulation we don't know how much space the panels will be taking uh based on how you'll be tilting the panel so a uh, one way by uh, by the scope of design to achieve it is to already design the walls in a you know in inclined form such that you don't have to spend on the paneling and uh, by the virtue of the form itself we are able to achieve uh, the best acoustics if we are not then we rely on the second uh, mechanical sort of options wherein the walls are uh, like any other structure of this the uh, state and then you build panels or you have fixed panels uh, as per the calculation and that's how it works uh, this is another example if you like here in uh, nabad i think jimmy had already spoken of this in the last presentation i thought i should include this this is the auditorium which is a part of the nabad management association building i think it is known it is named as jb auditorium designed the structure and the building is designed by bimal patel and his firm hcp uh now this is uh, this is uh, put here is as a student uh, the first thing we would do or first thing we are taught about typical examples is exactly this if you had a rectangular volume of auditorium uh, this is exactly how your panels will look when you uh, calculate reverberation times and when you calculate where uh, you need to reflect sound this is the exact form that you'll end up getting on the wall i mean the the smaller width of the panels is where the reflective surfaces would be and the larger width again is uh, so the larger is reflective and the smaller is absorptive so if sound goes on those vertical barriers it has to absorb and the larger has to act as reflective so that it reflects over the uh, seats and again very smartly done if you notice the tilt uh, the angle uh, it is uh, it is made so that it is dispersed on a wider audience uh again the roof is in uh, in multi levels to accommodate lighting other services uh, so the light is very smartly placed and you can see if we did a dark if there is a projection how the lights change and if there was a talk on the stage or if there was a performance then how the lights change uh, we don't see those uh, uh prominent uh, uh, lights on the panels which are in the case the auditorium is dark uh, when when it is lit it is lit entirely so i think that is one other consideration we want to put as an alternate lighting solution so the material palette here is purely wood and the acoustical fabric and notice how uh, how uh, we can uh, reduce uh, the bulky volume or the, the i would say obstructing volume on the floor by using clever seats uh, very smartly uh, made in steel and wood and the only uh, only the seats have to be worked in foam and upholstery otherwise the very sleek system of seats again not entirely supported probably only on four to five supports which if needed can be taken off they are only resting on anchor bolts 
so it needed probably you can uh, one side and you have an entirely uh, entire floor uh, made out of stone to use or replace uh, with any seats in that case now this is an auditorium from the same building they have two auditoriums uh is gone for a this is a smaller one is gone for a, a for a different approach here uh now what, uh, this goes to say what if uh, in times and in, if the uh, if the shows or the use of the purpose of the auditorium hall was to be in day daylight um is there a way that i can use daylight uh so then yes why not here the windows themselves are uh, covered with acoustical fabric such that uh, you can cover the windows up where you don't need light and uh, they still act as uh, acoustical surfaces when you need light if you slide the windows to one either side uh, they are still there so the fabric is still there so again it does not hinder the acoustical properties of the hall and you still manage to achieve the same uh, distribution of sound uh, throughout the entire hall also notice the roof here when we speak about larger volumes i think there have been a lot of students questioning about what kind of a structural framework can we use and we often come up with the answer of a waffle or a rib slab uh, here there is uh, a one way uh, one sided rib slab that we see uh, and because of the length because of the span look at the depth of it and how do we use the depth and then probably Uh, what we end up having is the volume is too much and the beams take up so much of space that i am less on the clear height but then uh, how do you uh, use the niche or the depth that you uh, end up wasting uh, for the said volume so very cleverly there are primary ducts circular ducts air conditioning ducts running within that niche uh, in a matter that uh, you can probably uh, get get past them you know without you noticing and wherever there are aisles you know there are lights needed you know suspended roof uh, suspended surfaces where uh, there is a facility to uh, integrate lighting systems again very clever use of a subtle uh, simple uh, auditorium hall you notice the entire back back wall the rear wall is again covered in acoustical panels and they are porous you can see that in the image so uh here i put this as a as a manner to state that uh, the walls need not be rigid if there are windows if your auditorium falls on the external side probably why not use them in a way that uh, you can you can uh prove both the options of using it under daylight of using it entirely under mechanical lighting uh, there should be an option if if the structure permits uh okay so here uh, speaking about wood and uh, speaking about uh, kenjo kuma uh, the guy who can literally make anything in wood and everything in wood here is an example of a of a competition entry that they won and uh, there is no pallet here strikingly no concrete no stone and no plaster no bricks this is what uh, if we have a lot a lot of wood uh, this image goes to prove what you do with wood um so the undulation the curves uh, obviously it is a lot of wood and wood can be uh, fabricated in this manner but again very cleverly the the projections of the wood the curves that we see uh, smartly worked to that uh, to that extent and uh, imagining that it's uh, it's end use is going to be music going to be a lot about sound if we look at the roof uh it appears to be a, a subtle dome a kind of a thing so you can actually feel looking at the image that it has something to do with resonating sound if if the sound you can imagine how it percolates from the top so it is to strike on the roof then again the series of uh, diminishing volumes i'd say in a, in a rather less uh, amount of height how clever it has been done so that Uh, the roof itself acts as a primary factor here to percolate sound rather than the walls or rather than anything around it again uh, speaking of endokuma and his uh, wood uh, masterpieces this is a structure uh, which uh, is both covered in wood externally as well as internally so the external fabric or you can say the exoskeleton of of the structure is done in wood fins and lowers however they are arranged in part 
So this is a is, is an example to study the composite uh, form of wood, which is CLT. Uh, so laminated timber uh, with two two uh, panels fused together, which form a folded panel structure. And these panels themselves are acting as an uh, as an as a reflectors uh, in the interior part of the auditorium and the skin, the external exo skin of the structure. Now again, how uh, using the same material. How he's managed to mimic the look of rust on the external side, uh, maybe uh, giving it a look of cotton uh, feel, sort of a dark shade, and in a lighter uh, shade in the internals. Uh, how he has uh, used folded panels uh, both on the roof and on the walls. So again, would uh, would doing the greater uh, thing here. Uh, that's another example, and I had to include a section in this one uh, by the same architect as first Kendall Kumar. Uh, and uh, here it goes to say when we when we think of uh, columns, beams, when we think of structure uh, of span of a space spanning so large, so huge. I mean, what do I do so that I don't see the concrete uh, columns or probably beams? Uh, now, what if you were to make those uh, structural members in wood? Then everyone would love to see wood because uh, that's that's not very uh, too much or too obvious that we see. Here. So he has uh, went forward to create the structural grid in wood again, CLT or glue lamp. Uh, the beams themselves, the rafters of the roof, again are uh, attached to the structure which is in wood. And for the auditorium, he has a suspended grid of seating. If you notice the section, uh, we know where the actual roof is, and uh, the entire false ceiling uh, sort of has been arranged. Uh, now, also notice where the stage is, uh, how it has been uh, cleverly uh, arranged in a manner that it reflects a uh, sound, rotatable, so that it comes on the audience. And wherever the seats are, again, there is a lattice of these uh, wooden frameworks forms such that they accommodate lighting. They are able to conceal wiring. Probably they are even able to conceal uh, the air conditioning ducts. So a clever use of a vassal grid, but in a non-conventional way where uh, we don't uh, use the structural grid, but probably uh, why not do it in wood? Uh, so here you can see the first four rows of seats uh, have a system of being uh, uh, the stage for that part being able to replace. So maybe if you need more of stage space for certain performances, or if you uh, are uh, if you don't need the stage and you need more seats, there is a hydraulic uh, lift system on the bottom, and there's a pit that they've made uh, very easily see in the section. So that is one sort of uh, facility or an option that we could look at. So why not uh, use the first four rows of seats probably if I need uh, a larger amount of space for the stage. And uh, when I'm limited, maybe use them for the seating. So that's the amount of flexibility I have for my auditorium if I go with this. Uh, again, so here, one of the ways, just like the walls, is to use the structural roof in your auditorium itself as, as a mix of reflectors and absorbers. But uh, if uh, the structure was planned for something else, if you have a multi-story structure for some reason, and then how do you treat the auditorium space? So then this is how you make, uh, how you uh, adjust the volume in a, in a way, and how you restrict the volume by using a certain material and accomplishing the goal. Mm, yeah, uh, uh, we could not move ahead uh, without mentioning Zaha. You see, this is uh, one of the examples of uh, an auditorium by Zaha Hadi. And any structure that we look at, uh, I think this stands true for all the structures. In noticing and uh, wondering how how is it created? How are these fluid forms created? What is it that gives such a smooth finish? Uh, what is it that does not even look like a stucco? So uh, probably this is the answer. If the, all our structures are made up of structural steel frameworks, and all of them are cladded with GFRC panels, which is uh, glass fiber reinforced concrete, uh, which is molded according to each curve on the structure. It is an immense amount of uh, design uh, labor and actual labor. 
uh, and uh, for people wondering um, that you know is there someone who even creates working drawings for such structures so uh, that's the reason i put the plan of the entire site not only the auditorium but the entire site and uh, you can look at the amount of center lines uh, the way the grid has been planned for the working drawing sake for the execution sake um i mean how many columns and in what in what orientations are the columns uh, even uh, placed uh, if we have two grids colliding on our structures uh, it's it's a nightmare for us uh, look at how many grids uh, they have tilted on the plan uh, so yes everything is achievable um, obviously in such structures uh, to achieve multi folds uh, we cannot go traditional we cannot use bricks we cannot use uh, we cannot end up creating a sheer volume of reinforcements probably that's not possible so this option purely implies to what uh, zahas firm has been doing a very convenient option of uh, covering the entire skin uh, in structural steel and then cladding it over with the gfrc panels and that's how everything around is done that is also how our uh, mumbai airport has been done just for an example um uh, so now this uh, this is the answer to uh, the question that what level of uh, what extent of design could you go uh, for a given proposal uh, i mean okay fine i'll design the auditorium but what next what if i design the auditorium seats uh, which no one would have thought of and what more could i do with it now uh, obviously again it's za so uh, the conventional method or the easier method was pulling up the seat uh, in a nice way that you have an entire corridor to walk but you no know, she imagine something like uh, the flower bud or the petals of a flower blooming and again contracting back uh, that was her idea her firm's idea uh, so uh, what could be achieved with a single piece of hinge ended up uh, getting so weird and so complex that it it rotates and it revolves so the mechanism itself has been designed here such that the backrest stays one of the armrest stays but only one of the armrest uh, which is the actual seat of of the uh, chair folds and tilts in such a way that it mimics the look of a flower bud opening and uh, contracting so this this has been put uh, uh, on purpose to say how much furniture means and it's not like you design a hall you design a space and then you get furniture from somewhere else no but if you went to the extent that you actually design the system uh, which no one else has and which goes around with your space uh, it all looks one in the end um, and i i think chairs or furniture are probably a lot of times the most uh, aloof for the last thing to do and there are times when we end up uh, realizing that the chairs probably are not even going in the space uh, so why not design them while while you are at it uh, so this this is just a, a contextual example of what furniture could do and what how you could manage to uh, entirely with uh, the mechanism of furniture uh, looking at not how uh, how in a manner that it has been made but what we can do with the amazing use of technology and uh, the knowledge of design that you have and that's a building in switzerland uh, again with a different use of wood here uh, this has been designed to mimic the look of qatar because uh, the building was possible by a huge donation from qatar so they they wanted to uh, so you you look at the walls uh, everything sort of they have those islamic patterns uh the the upper layer of walls and the roof is an interesting feature here now what happens on the wood is it is a skin it is an entirely made up uh, skin and wood which has the ability to tilt each and every triangular panel that we see uh there is a brand in the name of wood skin uh, it's in milan italy which does only this uh their work their job is to prepare these mesh triangulated skin and wood uh, they have a base layer of fabric and the uh, glue veneer a very thin piece of veneer uh, or wood over that in a way that the entire the fabric gives you the option to fit the panels achieve a curve in whichever direction you want and it can be fixed so here 
uh, the black panels have been again cleverly used for lighting and uh, the rest of the roof, uh, the wood acts as uh, the acoustical uh, panels part for the entire hall. Uh, the same language uh, sort of has been mimicked on the vertical surfaces uh, where you ha again have these uh, triangular, uh, triangular folds uh, specifically allowing and disallowing sound in a certain way. Also, at the same time, uh, uh, how smartly the entire lighting from the roof, when it falls on these panels, then again, what, what certain kind of a look it gives. Um, so that that's another idea. When you speak of uh, making panels for the purpose of uh, percolating sound, dispersing sound in a way, but when you put light on these filtered panels, what happens then? A very cleverly managed uh, space wherein each of each individual uh, panel is uh, cleverly visible. Uh, the roof sort of, um, and also the influence being from Qatar, uh, their prime, uh, uh, one of the ideas for the roof was uh, sand dunes. So they, if you notice, it is a series of dunes on a very subtle, uh, subtle level. The roof is flat, but if we were to look at the entire roof at once, you'll notice that it's actually a formation of small, small dunes, sand dunes. So that is one thing they wanted to mimic with this uh, wood skin. Um, this is a building in Spain, which, uh, which goes to say that what if uh, you have a huge volume of space inside and uh, you need to cover the uh, skeleton, the skin of the building with uh, something which is detachable in its form. Uh, what if I want to restrict the harsh sunlight on my site? If my site does not have buildings around it. Uh, I mean, what if I have the misfortune that I have to, I have to create a building, but, uh, you know, there is one, one facade which is entirely I can do nothing about. So uh, do I keep it dead then? It seems a dead wall. So this is one of the uh, ideas you can do. A very clever system of a grid of structural steel, very sleek grid, uh, covered with uh, corrugated sheets and then finished with roofing sheets above. Uh, the beauty of this example is that the, the entire roof sort of attaches to the structure. So there's no separate structural grid for this roof. It is actually... Uh, lightweight and uh, you can detach the roof so it acts as in uh, as literal terms as an external skin it sits on top of the structure which is already there giving you the ability to constrain light heat sun from one direction and you see on the other direction there are perforations in it so then again allowing the same amount of light into the structure perhaps uh, so if you only uh, use uh, images of the facade here to show uh, the massive use of steel panels as as a structure and as a finish uh, as a finished material over uh, an already existing uh, structural piece. Um, that is one of the renders from uh, Sanjay Puri Architects. Uh, it's a building. Uh, uh, he is proposed for in Ahmedabad, which is uh, supposed to be a convention center. And I have this year because uh, I know most of us won't like it, but it's an award-winning design. And uh, the the only uh, primary purpose we see here is how he has done the roofs. I mean, we can, uh, of course, there are options to make it better. But the fact that it's a concrete roof and... Uh, when you have a thick, thin, very slim layer of concrete, how do you introduce folds into that? Can you introduce folds? If you do, uh, for the virtue of design, probably your space needs it. And how do you use the space, which sort of uh, uh, it, the negative space, uh, or probably the space which is left out because of the curves? Uh, if there was a way to use it for lighting, for natural daylight, I think this is the option which answers that. Uh, so very cleverly, and th that's not light, so it's not uh, it's not doing any harm to the space. If there was any clever way to achieve a flat roof uh, by giving certain folds into the roof and uh, letting in light, I mean, this uh, appears to be the easiest option uh, rather than probably going for light wells, maybe uh, designing separate skylights for designated areas. No, what if I could divide the entire roof 
and I could form undulating envelopes such that the vertical barriers could be again covered in glass and selectively I could throw light into the space. So again, one, one option achievable entirely through materials and through the function of a single, uh, single uh, side of a volume uh, doing its purpose. Only concrete folds glass to let light in. Uh, that's another example we had from the last time. I just added interior photographs because I thought uh, there should be something looked upon. This is not an auditorium building. It's it's an exhibition space in Ahmedabad again. I mean, there's 79 stories. This is done by Vasco Shilp Consultants, which is uh, Doshi Sir's firm. And uh, the reason I have this here is to, to sort of uh, get an awakening that uh, we are designing an auditorium, but there are spaces around the auditorium where people will enter from. There are spaces after the performance that people would like to go to. So those should not be neglected spaces. I mean, what, what can you do to transition spaces and where people collect at a certain point? How do you make a lobby? Uh, how do you have, uh, have a space gathered with people? How do you make daylight enter into the space, you know? So if you look at the entrance on the top left corner, the main bank entrance of the structure, uh, the way the staircase is done, it's entirely an open roof above. Look at the amazing uh, shadows that the structure creates, you know, with a rigid form. Uh, the use of stone, the use of concrete, and uh, spaces where uh, they, they need to be uh, jutting out uh, small balconies from the passages. How uh, cleverly he has embarked those balconies. Uh, uh, giving it uh, an importance, uh, you know, that small square box with a very simple railing, uh, why not? And again, speaking of internal finishes, if you notice the concrete on the roof and the tiles, the stone on the floor, they are matching. Uh, often we end up designing floor separately and the ceiling separately, but if you could, so two materials, two separate materials, stone flooring and concrete, but uh, can they be arranged in a similar configuration so that I feel while walking through the corridor, I feel okay. Uh, it is one space in the end. Uh, and talking about the exhibition space, uh, the roof, uh, the ceiling, rather the slab, appears floating in a way that uh, there is a continuous line of uh, daylight entering the hall. If you look at the purposely done half wall, you could say, and the uh, the clever use of that height uh, to have a horizontal slit across the hall such that it allows daylight. And if that was not enough, uh, the ceiling itself has those sort of skylights, uh, again, very cleverly pointed in one direction. Most uh, obviously, it's the north direction. So how do I get uh, light from the slab such that maybe uh, I, I do not, I'm not able to use the entire length of the roof. Uh, so fine, maybe I'll introduce one or two. So the roof again here is uh, the slab that we see, the false ceiling is again done in an acoustical uh, material. Most probably it's bison panels, gypsum board or, uh, uh, yeah, so it's, so it's those. It's very evident from it. Uh, and the contrast of uh, the palette here, uh, gray slab, uh, gray raw uh, finished uh, ceiling, white walls, and then black, dark uh, stone flooring, tile flooring with that skirting. Uh, the way each surface differentiates itself uh, without, uh, without stating uh, a gallery of such kind, you know, when you walk by and you notice where there is a wall, where there's a, you can cleverly see there's a ceiling and there's a floor, and I think uh, Doshi have always had this even in the earlier structures that he's, uh, he's done. Uh, I remember a lot of incidences in the set building that our professor used to tell us. Uh, notice the groove on the small groove on the beam uh, and that's done because he wanted people to know it's a beam. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, so that's that. Uh, this is probably the uh, the final example that I have here. Again, uh, in the last sem, we had a lot of students working with blue lamp. Uh, but uh, in fact, last week from the class itself, someone asked, uh, we don't have blue lamp buildings in India. Uh, this is the answer to that. Uh, very recently, probably three years ago, the first building to use blue lamp in India is the set workshops, which is designed by Gurudev. Uh, 
uh, saying, sir. Uh, prominent use of glue lamp uh, members here and good for the partitions, for the doors, for the benches, for everything apart from the structure. And uh, also glue lamp being used a mimic uh, to say that the entire roof is done in glue lamp. Now, this was imported uh, glue lamp from Canada because uh, they could do it probably, but it's not like you always need to rely on uh, on an agency outside of India to get glue lamp. Glue lamp, the concept of glue lamp or CLT is very simple. It is a lot of members, probably recycled uh, plywood members or whatever board members, glued together and steam bended uh, to create whatever. If you need a rafter for a roof, you can do that. If you need to create straight flat partitions, we can do that. It's all about gluing them and steaming them up. So here we see a clever use of uh, rafters, which are actually structural grids for the roof. And uh, the cables that we see, the steel cables, uh, are there so that uh, probably if uh, the structure introduces sag over a period of time, uh, so the, the cables uh, help uh, to counter that sag. And already, if we notice the arc of the, of the rafter in wood, um, it is designed in such a way that it should not uh, have uh, added sag over it. It is inverting the sag actually, so there shouldn't be, but just in case fails, there is steel, uh, a very subtle reinforcement of two cables which, uh, which will negate the force and it does the job. And uh, again, when uh, uh, the, the periphery, the buildings in the entire campus are uh, prime examples of how you could let in north light. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we managed to do that here as well. Uh, a very late workshop, or light is all a workshop needs. So the prime function of this space was a workshop. So, with minimal or probably no artificial lighting, uh, the entire workshop space is day late throughout the day. And uh, abundance of light, the only thing they had to introduce was air conditioning because uh, of the summers and the heat in Ahmedabad right now at this point. Um, Probably to go with the building without air conditioning would would not work there, and uh, we've, all, we've all felt that uh, what happens with the old building. So a very clever use of those circular blowers in uh, in just uh, one direction. If, if you notice the false ceiling on the passages, or probably the window, it's in wood, so there is space above which carries the duct, and you only see these. Uh, white blowers coming out of the concrete wall. So very sleek, very nicely done design, hiding all the services and showing off what is of major importance here, which was the timber. Uh, this is an amazing show of uh, wood, uh, of glue lamp, how wood could be used. Uh, it means the series of rafters on the roof and uh, doors, furniture, partitions, everything. The entire space internal is probably done with the uh, uh, glue lamp, apart from the structure which had to be in concrete. So this is one, one way of uh, cleverly using or designing larger span structures with glue lamp. Uh, why not? Only it is the same as uh, doing a one-way rib slab or even a two-way rib slab, but in wood. Uh, so yeah, that, that is one thought of consideration or thought of materials probably for structures for internals that we could have in our list uh, that's the uh, that's the end is a short presentation uh, along with this i would urge uh, all of you to uh, probably or you have there is a list of uh, on arch daily where i've taken most of the content of the presentation you can very easily find it there is there are articles on a list of efficient sections, 30 sections of auditorium design that you should go through. There is a list of flexible layouts. Uh, I didn't have them here uh, for obvious reasons. That is for your um, uh, self-study. Uh, please look at those, uh, how people have managed to uh, get in flexible options, arrangement options, and structural options for auditorium. Uh, list down everything that you find, something to do with structure, something to do with seating, and there's everything, everything, uh, the most evident, the most uh, efficient option of uh, sections, plans, layout, uh, that will help you start. And probably if you have prepared notes of the materials, I think more or less we've covered all possible materials that we could use for a structure, be it auditorium or 
specifically auditorium for this studio but yeah so i, I hope uh, being able to uh, populate the list if not uh, diminish it uh, so yeah thank you uh, if anyone has any questions uh, please go ahead more questions <laughs> thanks dharmesh it so, seems to uh, be a very sorry. elaborate list sorry um uh, dharmesh uh, that was really wonderful uh, presentation especially coming after i just finished uh, materials in acoustic class uh, oh, okay. we just touched on the basic where we also talked about how these uh, wooden could be you know created uh, acoustically and which, which you just emphasized on so i hope that brought the point home and uh, we would get some wonderful palette of materials in the working drawing set thank you yeah even i thought that uh, it was a fine compilation of work so uh, good very good range both of projects as well as of material um, i think it should help students uh, in understanding both interior as well as envi in exterior envelopes yeah i think it's high time now that uh, they take these major decisions uh, there is no there is not much time to ponder particularly in this studio um, it is about them taking the first step then you can gather that we are here to help you out yeah i see some student questions let's let's go and take them yeah. Yeah. Um, I just uh, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to know the name of the material you mentioned in the SEPT workshop. I didn't quite catch it. Uh, it's a uh, glue lamp CLT, a cross laminated timber or glue lamp. It's the same thing. Oh, okay, okay. CLT okay. panels, or you can search for it. Uh, Canada is much more known for uh, it. Uh, we don't do it much here. I think you were the one who pointed out the question. If I'm not wrong, in the previous weeks, uh, why we don't uh, have glue no, lamp no. here? Or probably I don't know something else. But yeah, uh, it struck to me in the previous studio when Jimmy mentioned that we have so much of uh, unused plywood where from all the sites, uh, specifically uh, forget the country, but even if we were to source wood in Mumbai, there's a lot. And I myself know uh, when you have a laminate over a sheet of plywood, nobody takes it as a scrap. Nobody will. They'll ask you to keep it at your workshop, uh, do whatever you want. But they all need raw plywood because of obvious reasons. They can make any anything out of it. So if we were to collect all of this plywood boards, all of this, uh, even if it is pre-laminated already, and I mean it doesn't take much effort to take out laminate. Just a a hot gun does the job. So, if we were to reverse it and glue and stack all of these sheets in a certain form, we are able to make um, flat panels. We are able to make curved rafters. We can support roofs. We can make entire walls out of it, which probably Europe and uh, the states have been doing. But because they are doing it sustainable, because we don't do it, it's like uh, we don't have wood. Uh, how could we manage to glue more wood? You don't have to procure wood for gluing it. You already have wood. Just manage a way to use it. Uh, so it's just an initiative or a thought that we lack. Probably it's nothing to do with the the fanciness and range of other countries. But that's the thing. Raban has a question. Yeah, kind of similar question, but when we talk about blue okay, lamp timber and just uh, timber work in general in auditoriums, uh, how do we counter? Like, if we're building in a coastal climate where the moisture is really high and a tropical coastal climate, how do we manage to work our wood while also like not uh, completely insulating our design from the elements? So the best and good thing about wood is that it can be polished. Uh, it can be painted, uh, and that is where these things come in. If you don't, if uh, uh, if by fortunately you have a dry climate, and the mud does, you do nothing with it. If you have humid, 
you have moisture around you treat it uh, that is the same thing that happens when you have exposed steel in the same climate you don't use steel the way we procure it there is a certain treatment we do right uh, otherwise it, it it's going to rust uh, so the same can be applied to wood uh, certain polishes certain paints will stop it from deteriorating and uh, when you have a member that is so thick which is built up of membranes of wood probably the chances of it damaging as a structure are very less it is not like using a pattern of wood which we uh, which we rather do which is all we've learned it is a combination of a lot of patterns of wood if you can imagine so the strength is never gone and the only option to treat is the external surfaces of that piece of rafter that we do which already has probably 10 to 20 to 50 uh, pieces of rafters glued uh, on on it, on each other so the only surface left is the external surface which is not a uh, pretty much uh, troublesome so yes with appropriate coatings i mean it's achievable all right thank you i would uh... i would list like to add uh, thanks darmesh for that uh, wonderful thanks. presentation lots of uh, case studies lots of uh, stuff which is there uh, but uh, students remember um, uh, design is not a linear process if you um, if you look at the uh, workshop at sept and you saw the doors which are there it is pivoted in the center and it closes so you can actually separate spaces uh uh darmesh uh, also showed the the possibility of these um, uh, panels going over the windows where light can be cut out so i mean uh, it ha all happens simultaneously you may talk about the material you may talk about the section you may talk about the chair arrangement etc etc but and that will have a uh, an influence on the plan of your auditorium or your plan of your foyer area or something like that or how it opens out he also showed the example of the roof in spain which go uh, overhangs far beyond the 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 footprint of the building so um it is it is a back and forth process uh, um of course do we are talking about linear time we have to show you things at a different uh, uh, you know in a different sequence but uh, you may be interested in designing a stair at this moment and what are the materials for that or maybe doing the raking of the auditorium or the ceiling of the auditorium and that will then transform what the plan is about so uh, don't look at uh, what we are putting out as a as a kind of a linear kind of process because design just oscillates between the 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 uh, smaller scale of detailing to the larger scale of the planning of the and architectural volumes of the space so uh, understand that and and uh, don't hesitate to go back and forth back and forth change your plan but understand that you have a certain capacity so within that uh, uh, span of time you should be able to make the changes quickly if you think something is uh, very interesting yeah Are there any questions, or Meenal? Uh, sorry, yes. Sorry, sorry. Are there any other questions, or we move to our groups now? No, I think. I mean, if they have questions, we can wait. Otherwise, we can move to our uh, groups. Yeah, we can move. Maybe ask questions. Okay. Thank you, Darmesh. Thanks. Bye. Take Thank care. You, Thank you. Thank you. So I will meet my group after ten minutes. Mm, by nine twenty, we meet. Mm, bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.